Hey, this is Jake Bartlett for AE Scripts, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up and use BOA from BOW plugins. I'll be building this animation from scratch, showing you how to use all of the controls of the plugin. Then I'll walk you through how I built a couple more complex examples. One for animating these two arms, and another animation where I use Stardust to generate these blood cells, and then very precisely control the path that those particles take using BOA, which is something there's really no other way to do inside of After Effects. I'll start by adding a new solid, and I'll name this BOA, and I'll start by drawing a mask for BOA to wrap the texture around. Then I'll go over to the mask parameters, twirl that list down, and choose that mask that I just drew as BOA's mask source. Next, I need a source layer for BOA to wrap around that mask, and that source needs to be in this same comp. So I'm gonna go to my project, and right here I've set up a source that's a pencil texture. I'm just gonna drag that out into my comp, if I move this around, you can see that it has an eraser, it's very long, and then it has a lead tip on the end. It doesn't matter where this is in the comp, and I'm actually just going to turn it off. Then I'll come back up to my BOA layer, close up the mask parameters, and go into the source parameters, and select that pencil layer as the source. And right away you see BOA working. I'm going to move this mask to the center of the comp so we can see both ends, and then I'll hide the mask visibility just for now. If I open up my mask parameters, one of the first properties is start point. And if I adjust this property, you can see that BOA is sliding that texture along the mask path. And the plugin updates live as you edit that mask path. Now, your mask paths do not have to be created inside of After Effects. I drew this text in Illustrator, so I'm actually going to copy and paste this into the mask that I have set up for BOA, just so we have something nicer to look at. Now, this path is much longer than the one that I had drawn before, so you see that the source doesn't actually stretch along the entire path. So I'm going to adjust the start point to get the eraser to stop where I want it. And then I'll go into my source parameters under source geometry. And here we have a whole bunch of controls for the way that the source texture looks. First we have rotation. So if I wanted the pencil to go the opposite direction, I could just select that and change it to 180 degrees. And now you see the lead is at the opposite end. You can also rotate it 90 or 270 degrees. Then I have controls for cropping the source texture, so I could crop the left end. You can see that that is bringing in the right side of the texture as it's trimming off the left end. You can do the same thing for the right or the top and bottom. But what I really need to adjust is the source X and Y scale. I want to increase the scale of both of these so that the pencil goes all the way to about here on my path. So I'll grab the X scale and turn it up until it's about where I want it. And you can see that this is pushing the eraser end back as well. And that's because I've already shifted the start point 11% forward. So I'm just going to adjust that a little bit more until it's where I want it. That looks great. And now I want to match the Y scale to the X scale so that those proportions are constrained. So I'll just type in 186. And that's looking great. Next we have mesh definition. And you can increase this if you're noticing any issues with the warping but it doesn't look like I have any issues right now, so I'm gonna leave it right there at 25%. Next, we have twist at start and end, and this will twist the source along the path from either end. Then we have the ability to scale the start or end of that source up or down, so we can kind of create a taper here on either end. And finally, we can trim the source based on how we've cropped it under source geometry, so with these properties, you could animate in a very similar way to trim paths on a shape layer. Now, all of these controls stick with the source, and let me show you what I mean by that. I will turn the scale down to zero on the start and twist the end a little bit, and I'll also pull back the reveal a little bit. Now, as I adjust the start point, you'll notice that all of these controls that I just set are moving with that source texture. So these controls actually manipulate the geometry of your source layer. Next, we have our mask controls. We've already seen the start point, which allows us to animate the source texture along that path. Now, the start point will always be the first vertex of your mask. So if I set this to zero, the start of my texture will always line up with the start of my mask. But if I increase this to 100%, it doesn't shift the source all the way to the last point. And that's because I have relative to source width checked. If I uncheck that, now my entire source is shifted off the mask path at 100%. Now if I bring this back just a little bit, you'll see that my source geometry comes back in. 
So if you want to be very precise about how your source geometry is positioned along that path, I would recommend unchecking relative to source width. Then we have stretch along path, and what this allows is to have both a start and end point control. So I can control each end independently from the other, and the source geometry will automatically stretch between those two points. Then we have a set of controls that are very similar to the source parameters. Twist, scale, and reveal at mask start and end. And these behave exactly the same way, except that they'll stick with the mask instead of the source geometry. So I could twist the mask start, I could increase the scale at the mask end, and I could trim off some of the start. But now if I animate the start point, you can see that the source geometry is now being shifted along that mask, and the warping that's coming from these controls isn't moving with it. So as the pencil gets to this point, it starts to get wider, instead of this part of the pencil always being wide. So BOA is very flexible in the way that you can warp both your source geometry and your mask path. Next up is the mask Z parameters. If I open up the mask Z parameters, you'll notice that I have a control for every single vertex on this mask path. And I'm able to shift the Z position of every one of those vertexes independently from all the others. This can be extremely useful for creating depth, but it also allows you to fine tune some of your source geometry. I'll undo and zoom in here, and you'll notice that at some of the points where the mask paths are crossing, our source mesh is intersecting itself, and it doesn't look all that great. But if I grab my first Z vertex control and just push it forward a tiny bit, you can see that these two segments of the path overlap properly now. Then I'll go to the second control and push it back a little bit as well to get rid of that intersection. And I can go down the line, counting this is the third vertex, fourth, fifth. I'll take the fifth vertex and push that back just a little bit. Five, six, seven. Maybe pull that forward. And that fixed this intersection right here. Eight, nine. I'll grab the tenth one move it backwards, and that fixed both of these intersections. So now I have very clean looking geometry. And you don't have to be subtle with this by any means. I could really exaggerate the Z positioning of all these vertexes to add a lot of depth to this lettering. I'll undo back to our clean geometry. And next up we have per vertex scale. And in my opinion, this is one of the most powerful features of BOA. What this allows is for you to taper your source geometry at any one of your vertexes. So I could scale the first vertex down, scale the second vertex up, maybe scale the third one down a little bit, and very quickly and easily I'm able to create some very dynamic line weights that just isn't possible any other way in After Effects. If you're familiar with the splines deformer in Cinema 4D, this has very similar functionality. So I'll just add a few more tapers here. And just like that, I've tapered this lettering, and if I set some keyframes for the start point, I can animate my source geometry along that tapered mask path, and the geometry will warp with those mask deformations. And as you can see, it renders very quickly. And let's say that you wanted to taper a point on this mask path, but you didn't have a control for that specific section. So let's say right here. All I have to do is switch to my pen tool and add a point, and BOA automatically adds another vertex control on both the Z parameters and the vertex scale. So this would be the second to last control. I can taper that down or up and very easily manipulate the way that my source geometry is being warped. Finally, we have extrusion parameters. And to have access to these controls, you'll need to switch the camera mode from 2D to 3D. And this allows us to add depth to our geometry by extruding it. So let me add a camera to my scene and I'll rotate it at an angle, and then I'll increase the extrusion. I'll turn off my mask path visibility for now, but you can see that now I have two copies of that face being extruded, and I can very easily increase the number of layers that are between both of those faces, and now we have a 3D version of that pencil. And these 3D extrusions follow all of the same controls, so I could twist this path, and that extrusion will be twisted as well. But you'll notice that at some points where the geometry is rotated directly towards the camera, you're going to see in between those segments. Now you could turn the number of layers up, but the more you have, the longer it's going to take to render. 
Instead of doing that, you could actually leave the extrusion number down to the minimum of one and add a contour mask. To do this, I'm gonna add another mask by just double clicking on the rectangle tool and that will generate a mask around the entire layer. Then I'll select that as my contour mask and I'll rotate the camera so we can get a little bit better picture of what's going on. You'll notice this white outline around the entire geometry. If I double click on this mask and scale it down while holding command or control on a PC, that will bring in the top and bottom at the same time and I can shrink this down until it fits nicely right on the edge of my geometry. And then I'll do the same thing for the sides, bringing that in until it lines up nicely with the ends of the pencil. Then I can change the color and I'll just sample one of the colors from the actual pencil layer and the gap between the two extruded layers is no longer visible. Now obviously this contour is not fitting to the pencil so I'd want to maybe add a point right in the middle, grab both of these and bring them back just a little bit until it lines up. I could bring that in a little bit as well and there we go. Now I've got a perfectly fitted contour to that lettering and I can continue to manipulate this as much as I want. The default 50% contour definition is usually enough. If I turn this way down to say five, you see that this is really lowering the definition around those curves. You can turn it up if you need to, but for most situations, 50% is plenty. BOA is also reactive to lights. So I'll add a new light. Point light is fine. Press okay. And you can see that BOA's geometry is reacting to that light. If I add an ambient light into the scene, that could help it look a little bit better. Now BOA does not support shadows, but this can help add a lot of depth to your scene. If I zoom in here, you can see some of this tearing around this curve of the H. If I go back into my source parameters and increase the mesh subsampling, I can eliminate that tearing. Another thing that makes BOA such a powerful tool is that now that this is all set up, I can actually switch my source while preserving all of the manipulations that I've already made. So if I go back into my project, I have a ruler texture. I'll bring that into my comp and again, hide it. Then under my BOA source parameters, I'll switch the source from the pencil to the ruler. And just like that, I'm able to apply this to a completely different texture. Now I would need to adjust my contour to fit the new geometry, but that is very easy to do. I'm gonna switch back to 2D, duplicate this ruler comp, go into it, and just add an adjustment layer, add a hue and saturation, and shift the color to be maybe a blue. Now if I bring that pre-comp into this comp, I can actually set that as the back face source for my geometry. So I'll go to the back face source, select ruler two, and then if I twist the start value, you see that I now have two separate faces. So that's just another level of customization that this plugin allows. Here I have another example of how you could use BOA to drive some character arms. I have two instances of BOA, one for each arm, and they're both using the same source. So let me open up this pre-comp just so I can show you how I built it. I actually made this flannel texture inside of After Effects. So if we take a look, it's just this simple tile square. And then I used motion tile to repeat that to cover the entire arm. And then I made a little cuff out of a shape layer just to hide the seam between the sleeve and the wrist. And that's my source geometry. And because this artwork was built in After Effects, it's very easy to manipulate. So I could adjust the scale of the pattern, change the length of the color, the shape of the hand, whatever I need to do, and it will always update in my main comp. And driving the entire animation is just the start point for each one of the BOA layers. That source just travels along the mask path. And I added a little bit of an overshoot at the end to give it a more cartoony feel. And that's all there is to it. Now you might notice that my artwork is actually traveling beyond the mask path. The way that I got this to happen was by going to the reveal at mask end under the mask parameters and increasing that beyond 100%. If I back this up to 100%, you see my artwork gets trimmed off, but I can extend this out as far as I need to, to reveal the rest of my artwork. And the source will continue to go in whatever direction the last vertex was pointed. So if I were to adjust the curve of this last handle, the hand is now pointing in the direction of that handle. And if I were to add some keyframes on the mask, I could even animate this to change the direction of the pointing. So 
So that's one way that BOA could even be used as a character rigging tool. And here's my last most complex example. Another great thing about BOA is that you can literally use anything as your source geometry. It doesn't have to be a still graphic. It could be an animation you created in After Effects or even a video clip. In this example, I'm actually using Stardust to generate these red blood cells. So let me jump into that comp so you can see how it's set up. This is my source layer. And if I scrub through here, you can see the red blood cells moving through in a straight line. So I've just set up Stardust to emit my red blood cell particle, which you can see right here is just a rotating 3D particle. And then I just have it emitting across the screen in a straight line. And I made my comp very wide and short because I knew I was going to need to stretch it a pretty far distance along my mask path. Then I added in my other layers to make up the vein, and I animated it opening up to reveal those blood cells inside of the vein. Then back in my main comp, I was able to wrap that source around a mask path, taper it off on each end, and I brought this middle vertex closer to the screen so that you can get a nice up-close view of these blood cells. Now, if you're familiar with particle systems and After Effects at all, you know that there's really no way to control particles this flexibly. Instead of red blood cells inside of a vein, you could show water and debris traveling through pipes and bend it in whatever direction you need to or wrap complex brush stroke textures into any shape you can draw with a mask path. There's so many possible uses for BOA, it's hard to even think of them all. So that is BOA from BAL Plugins. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and have fun playing with BOA.